like his father and his father's father. Young James the Fourth puts the ball to the tee. Little could he know just what was to be from that day. I had a most grateful chance a couple of weeks ago to visit the sacred grounds of the old course in the shadow of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St. Andrews on the eve of the playing of the 150th anniversary edition of the Open Championship, the first one having been played at Prestwick in 1860. This year will mark the 28th time the Open Championship has come to the old course, and as the great golf balladeer Billy Mack says, you can indeed feel the ghosts all around you. The first championship in 1873 saw 26 players tackle a rain-soaked old course for two rounds and produced a true local champion, 25-year-old St. Andrews caddy Tom Kidd, who pocketed 11 pounds for his historic win, a bit less than will be banked this year. Young Tom Morris, who'd already won four titles, finished third. His legendary father, Old Tom, finished seventh, ten shots back. Mr. Kidd was also the first to be awarded the actual Claret Jug, now in permanent residence at the Royal and Ancient Clubhouse. I couldn't quite get a close look, as my membership is still pending. Dream on, Mitch. As you stroll the hallowed fairways and walk the streets of the most famous golf landscape in the world, you can't help but be enveloped by an atmosphere rich in golf history at every turn. But while thinking about who would be the next Open champion, it occurred to me that the real joy I experienced in St. Andrews that week was the feeling of openness. That is, that those of us who love the game are richer for the attitudes around the old town about the game, about the old course, about those who come to play on this most cherished ground. Nowhere else on earth can anyone, literally, walk out on this famous a spot, on what is, in this community, a public park in the non-golfing hours, or all day on Sundays, other than this particular week coming up, of course. How about hanging out on some nearby steps with a beverage of your choice, with the most celebrated 18th green in golfdom just a few feet away, as golfers who've made the long pilgrimage from around the world have a chance to walk in the footsteps of history's greatest names. Whether you're playing one of the seven courses that make up the St. Andrews Lynx Trust, or the famous Himalaya putting course right next to the first fairway of the old course, this is a golfing land of walking, of camaraderie, of passing the joy down to your children. You get a sense in the town of St. Andrews of golf as it should be, a literal walk in the park for people of all ages. It is an enchanted and enchanting place, and if you love the game and have the opportunity, it's indeed a journey worth taking. As I stood in the middle of the first fairway of the old course at dusk and looked up, it was hard not to wonder whose name would be on top of the leaderboard when the Open Championship comes to a close on July 18th. Standing in front of it, though, what I realized was that it didn't really matter. The way of thinking that allowed me to be standing out there is all that did.